Hello, thank you for tuning in. My name is Alexandra Keller. I am here with the Association of African American Cultural Gardens, and we are doing the St. Kofa series today. Today we have a wonderful and esteemed guest, Mr. Trey Lewis. Yes. Yeah, hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you as well, Alex. Yeah. Pleasure mm -hmm. being here. Excited yeah. about this interview. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being here. Um, so first question for you. Um, tell me a little bit about who you are and your, your background and upbringing. Yeah, well, my name is Trey Lewis and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, born and raised here in this city and uh, uh, gone to play basketball at the professional level but I also played uh, at three division one schools Penn State, Cleveland State and uh, the University of Louisville. I went awesome. on to play uh, overseas in Germany, France, uh, Israel, uh, Montenegro, um, a lot of places overseas. I can't even think so of all cool. of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, but also got a chance to, to play and live out my dream to play at the NBA level, you know, yeah. the Utah Jazz and the Salt Lake City Stars. So uh, that's been an unbelievable experience. Uh, but I also in Cleveland, Ohio, I have a nonprofit foundation called Trey Lewis Cares. And um, uh, also I work in my family's business, uh, Lewis Unlimited. And we're one of the very few black owned manufacturers here in Cleveland. Awesome. Yeah. So you have your hand just professionally in so many places. Yeah. You are a new, newish father mm -hmm. yep. um, and newlywed. Ooh, you're saying, you know, mm -hmm. right on that cusp of time, right. two years. Um, how do you balance everything? How do you keep everything just kind of in motion? Yeah, yeah. well, honestly, by taking it one day at a time, um, there's moments where I do feel like, man, this is too much for me, you know, because it's, uh, it's to so many moving pieces. Uh, but when yeah. I just realize that you know all I have is today in this present moment and stay present I'm able to you know handle multiple tasks that's perfect yeah. um, what lessons have you learned along the way yeah in your journey uh, the biggest thing uh, is when you take on new endeavors and you are transitioning into different fields and doing uh, so much I realized that you have to be patient with yourself you have to have patience and give yourself grace because you know you, when you're doing something new it takes time to build and right. uh, you know sometimes I want it like right now and I want the end result or because I'm a visionary and I can see the end result uh, but it just takes time to get there so it's just really learning patience. Mm, that's yeah. deep. Um, yeah. Did you have any mentors or people that kind of help reinstill those practices? Yeah so many people. I have a lot of uh, great friends and a great circle from you know Good. even my parents or whether it's uh, my pastor um, but I have a lot of friends and support that I can reach out to, uh, good counsel. So that, that really helps. And then not to mention my wife, she's yeah. probably the, the biggest on. one. Just like, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be all right, Trey, just calm down. Yeah. <laughs> so, I yeah. love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Um, so being out in the community and just getting to know just Clevelanders on that one-on-one -on -one yeah. basis, um, can you talk a little bit about Trey Cares? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So Trey Lewis Cares, I started it, um, while I was playing professional ball in France, uh, I always known that I've wanted to do something for kids. I've always known that uh, they're a big part to the future, you know, and sometimes, well, a lot of times they're, they're underserved, you know, wow. and uh, so I just wanted to use my platform as basketball, not only to give them resources, but also to help them teach them identity. Uh, for much of my career, I put all my identity in just being an athlete. And Very normal. Yeah, I think that happens a yeah, lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want kids to know that there's so much more to life than what you do. Right. Um, and so I use my platform to teach them about their identity in God and, and that they're God's children. And because of that, it allows them to, to be free and to um, actually understand that uh, there's so much more to life and more opportunities that are right. available to them. Right, and you feel like it's yeah. well received, the projects that you've been doing, do you feel Absolutely. like, yeah, it's very yeah. transformative. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to write my first book, and uh, I called it Peace to Perform because of that same reason, because I felt so much pressure to perform, um, whether it was at any level that I played basketball right. or, you know, in anything that I did, you might feel pressure, but understanding the peace comes from knowing who you truly are. And so it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what, um, you know, your present circumstances where you really know who you are. That allows you to peace, to, to freely be who God has called you to be. That's beautiful. Um, I feel like this whole Sankofa series has taught me a lot about just yeah. 
modern history building in the African American community. Absolutely. Like what you're doing is just making so many waves mm -hmm. and just looking at just things that we take for granted or ways that we just think of, yeah. you know, and we're just flipping them on their heads. So what do you feel like the importance is of just African American history? Like, why do you oh, feel like man. it's important to always keep that conversation going? It's so important. And, you know, growing up, you know, I'm grateful for my parents to teach me a lot about African American history and the great leaders of the past. Uh, because, you know, to know where you're going, you have to know where you come from. That is and, what Sankofa yeah. means. Really? Yeah, the Sankofa okay. bird. Oh, the bird, yes. Yes, stands yeah. in the, the front body, but mm -hmm. is always looking behind and is aware mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying. Yeah, so, you know, we have had so, especially as African Americans in our history and culture, we've had so much that we've had to come through, um, but that's also built this like resilience and this persistence to right. be able to continue to go forth. Right. So I think that's just very uh, important and I'm very grateful to understand, you know, African American history and everything that we've, we've gone through. Awesome. So are there any historical figures that stand out to you or really just have helped you in your own journey? No, absolutely. Uh, you know, especially being from the sports background, I'm gonna go with uh, leaders like even Muhammad Ali. Awesome. You know, Muhammad Ali was somebody who was very outspoken, uh, was somebody that, you know, wouldn't just go along with what everybody wanted him to do, but he, right. he stood for his people. And uh, you think of people like uh, Jackie Robinson. You Good know, one. Um, it's just well. amazing what, what we've had to, to go through, uh, even in a, in a profession where, you know, uh, it, you would think it's all about you know your abilities and your talents, but it's not about that, you know. And There's so, politics involved yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I think I recently watched a, a interview of, of Bill Russell, uh, actually a, a awesome. documentary on him. Yeah, and it was just, I saw clips of that as yeah, well. Yeah, and I didn't uh -huh. know all of the different things that he had to endure mm -hmm. uh, as a black athlete. So. Uh, those yeah. athletes uh, really inspire me. And obviously the, there's the, the, the big names like yeah. you know, Martin Luther <laughs> King and Rosa Parks and their sure. stories are just very um, inspiring. And you have the Frederick Douglass and um, yeah, so just many names. Uh, that yeah. really inspired me along this journey as well. And helped mold you kind of to yeah. how you present today. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. I even think about, you know, especially because I, I'm involved with hip hop too. Mm -hmm. And uh, hip hop just celebrated 50, 50 years. years. <laughs> so that's super exciting. And I think yeah. about even like uh, the KRS ones and uh, um, Chuck D from Public mm -hmm. Enemy. And Good choices. Uh, yeah, LL this Cool J. Is, you know, my yeah. father really introduced me to hip hop early on and Terrific. just the ability of music, how it can create change too. So all of this, you know, is a big part of yeah. African American history. And where can we find your music? Um, on all platforms, mm -hmm. Trey Lou, T R E Y L E W. Uh, that's my artist name. I just took the I S off of awesome. off of Lewis. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Trey Lou on all, all music platforms and on YouTube. Terrific. Yeah. Um, so final question for you today, and thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, you're just putting so much out there and just making so many big waves. Uh, what is the legacy you want to leave? I know you have a child, yeah. but when people look at you and they read your story, what do you mm -hmm. want people to remember about you? Wow, that's a, that's a really good question. That's something actually I do think about mm -hmm. uh, pretty often. And I really want people to, to remember me as someone who wasn't afraid to speak the truth. And uh, also somebody that represented um, what it means to have a true relationship with God. And, uh, and that's what I encourage anybody else and anybody who sees this interview is that that's the most valuable thing you can seek after. Is a, is a true, real relationship with our creator. So Trey, I actually have a gift for you that I brought from home today. Wow. Um, you are a father, and yes. so I'm bringing you two books today, wow. um, courtesy of my mother, Margaret Bernstein, who awesome. writes storybooks for fathers of color to read with their children. This is perfect. Yeah, I hope you like it. Um, the mission is just so fantastic, wow. and I hope you read. Absolutely, look at this right here. <laughs> this is perfect for my daughter. She's uh, eight months now, about to be nine months this month. So, yeah. Um, and we actually were li literally just me and my wife were just literally talking about buying books uh, to read her, and so this is this yeah. is perfect. Yeah, and representation yeah. as well, I think, is so yes. important in little kids' books, but in books in general, of course. Yeah. Um, so, what is it like being a new dad? Oh, I love it. It is 
it brings me joy like uh, I never even knew was possible. I just recently played in a basketball game the other day and we lost the game. And as soon yeah. as I you know, got off the court, she was just looking at me smiling. I forgot <laughs> all about the loss. So oh, wow. it's, uh, it's definitely life changing. So I really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. Well, yeah. thank you so much again for your thank time. You. Awesome. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, of course. So this has been uh, the Sankofa series brought to you by the Association of African American Cultural Gardens. I'm Alex Keller, and thank you so much for tuning in. Hello, everyone. I'm Leon Bibb. The African American Cultural Garden, one of the many cultural gardens on Martin Luther King Drive, celebrates the African American experience. Part of the garden is already completed on the upper level. It represents the past with the door of no return. You can walk between the black granite walls and imagine the fearful experience of those taken from Africa in tight quarters on slave ships. This is Danita Harris from News 5. What has not been built yet is a channel for water that cascades down the hill, representing the Middle Passage on the Atlantic Ocean. It leads to a black granite terrace that will host events. It is etched with the Little Dipper and the North Star, which guided thousands of enslaved people to freedom in the North. I'm Wayne Dawson. The water will continue to flow down the hillside in reference to the Ohio River and the Great Lakes that facilitated the journey to a better life. It also marks the continued struggle of black people to the present. The garden will end at Martin Luther King Drive. The entire structure will symbolize the spirit and tremendous resilience of our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents who came from the South to a better life in the North. This is Harry Boomer. The future platform beside the MLK Boulevard's walking trail will have benches and a water feature that gives homage to our past and hope to our future generations that anything is possible regardless of the challenges. This is Obi Shelton. Let's finish it. The African American Cultural Garden has a portion already built at the top of the hill. With your help, it will cover the entire hill as a magnificent tribute to those who came before us, as well as a symbol of pride and hope for future generations. We need your donations of money, time, and energy to make it happen. Everybody can contribute something. We can do it. Click the support button to get involved. Let's finish it. Thank you.